Hey guys, welcome back to Bry Society. Today we've got a beginner level Cricut tutorial for you and this week we're making personalised slippers with iron-on vinyl. So, once you've opened the Cricut design space and started a new project, it's going to bring up the canvas like this. Um, as you can see, I've already made my slipper design here, but I'm going to show you how I did this um, in case you're interested in that part of the tutorial. Um, so I'm going to put this design on my left slipper and this one on my right slipper. Um, so these are obviously um, coordinates um, for either like where you fell in love or your wedding venue, something like that. And obviously you can change this text depending on who you're making them for. So what you need to do is select the text box type in whatever your coordinates are so to make this as I want it so like this I'm gonna make it a center alignment I am gonna change the font size 75.9 and I'm going to change the font to Century Gothic. So I'm just going to search for that for speed. It's already in my system rather than being one of the paid for um, fonts. And um, so I've done that just so you can definitely make this alongside me if you want to match my design. Um, obviously, you can see with that particular font in my font size, that comes out a lot smaller, but that's fine. Okay, and then. I'm going to change my line spacing a little because I want to decrease this gap on my final design. So I'm going to switch that to a minus 1.8. Now in terms of the dimensions, obviously measure the space that you're going to be working in ultimately. So I've already measured mine with a ruler, decided how big I want it, and now I'm simply using these inch measurements to translate that onto, onto my design. So I want to change that up here. If you unlock this padlock, it'll let you resize it, but you can also just drag in the corner of the box to resize if you want to just play. I'm going to make mine um, 2.8 by 1.9. Okay, and then just close that padlock and it will hold those dimensions. Um, but so you can resize in this way also. Okay, I'm just gonna undo that. Okay, so we're back to where we were. So as you can see, this design now matches my original. So you are done with your coordinates. So now to make the bride or the name that you want on the other slipper. Again, just make another text box. Type in your text. I'm going in caps lock just because of how I want it to be. Okay, um, because you just did your last design in Century Gothic in that font, it will remember that font, but obviously you can go in and change it, but I'm maintaining the font for both slippers for me. So for this one, I'm gonna make my font size 106. Now, previously I've rotated this design by 270 degrees. It's not necessary because obviously you'll cut it out, you'll turn it, you'll position it on your item. This just helped me visualize how it was going to look um, next to my other slipper design. So if you want to do that, um, so you've got it selected, obviously it's no rotation at the moment, you need to type in 270 into there and hit enter. So that gives you that rotation. In terms of the measurements, um, if you unclick this box again like we did with the other one, um, we're going to make this 1.2 by 3.5 and then just lock that back up. Okay, and that's all there is to it. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of these extra ones. Okay, and I'm ready to make my design. Just make sure that your line type is set to cut for all of this because we are just going to cut it, we're not going to print or anything like that. So if you head over here in the top right hand corner to make it, we're going to hit that and it will sort your project onto the mats. Now it tries to group things up to 
use the space most efficiently, use the least amount of material. I like to space my things out a little bit more. You can move and replace things on this mat. It's not like your traditional print preview where you wouldn't be able to do anything. I didn't initially realize that and once I did, it changed my life. <laughs> okay, as you can see, this is turned back around horizontal. That's absolutely fine. So you'll just cut it out, turn it, and then adhere it to your slipper. So because of the type of project we're doing, we're gonna need to switch on this mirror function so it flips everything that we're doing so when we iron it on, it's magically the right way around again, okay? Once you're happy, I say you can keep moving these as much as you like. Uh, we're then gonna come down to this right hand corner and just hit continue. Next up, you gotta find your material. Obviously, I've got a bunch that are stored in here as my favorites, but if you don't already have it, just hit browse or materials. So I am using everyday iron-on. As you can see, there's different types of iron-ons. Make sure you click the right one. Okay, and then you've just got to load in your fine point blade. So we're going to load our blade into clamp B. So you just open it up, grab your blade. So it's the fine point one, so it's the one with the almost barely there point. Okay, and then we just pop it in the top here. Close the clamp like so. And it just locks it into place. Next up, you want to grab your standard grip mat. Because we're using everyday iron-on, we need this particular mat. Put your vinyl to size, and then we're going to stick it to the mat in the top left-hand corner. Give yourself a bit of extra to work with as well. So you're going to flip it over so that the shiny side, the plastic side, is face down onto the mat so you want to be cutting the vinyl not through the plastic backing sometimes a bit confusing as to which side's which but yeah the shiny plastic side down on the mat like so and all that we're gonna just load in the mat simply load it in under these plastic guides and press the flashing arrow button on the top so you're just gonna press the C cricket flashing button on the top and it will suck it in Press the flashing arrow button to eject a mat. And as you can see, my design is successfully cut through onto my vinyl. So next up, take your weeding tool and we need to remove the negative space from our design. So that's the part of the design that you do not want transferred on to your project. So typically the gap between the letters, numbers, and then the surrounding area. At this stage, you're just going to want to do a final check that you've definitely removed all the negative space. Then flip it over like this and peel your design away at this 45 degree angle from the mat. It'll stop your vinyl, whatever material you're using for whatever project, from curling up. So you want to remove the mat in this way. There you go. It's really useful to go to the Cricut Heat Guide uh, on their website. I'll put the link to that in our description box below. Um, but this tells you exactly what temperature you need to set it for for your heat transfer machine and material. So as you know from the um, equipment shot at the start, I'm using the Cricut Easy Press 2, so I selected that. And from the drop down list, I've selected my everyday iron arm. But obviously if you're using something different, you select whatever and I believe my slippers are cotton so again I've selected that from from the list I'm using the Cricut Easy Press mat 
it even gives you the option to select the towel and then you just hit apply. It defaults to coming up in Fahrenheit. I'm someone who likes to work in centigrade, so I switched that little button across, but that's really helpful. So it's telling me I need to preheat for five seconds, set it to 155 degrees centigrade, and transfer 30 seconds. So to do this, you just press the power on button on your Quick Easy Press. It remembers the settings from the last time you used it. To alter that, press and hold the temperature button, and then once it's flashing, use the arrow or minus keys to adjust as you need. Mine's fine, so I'm pressing and holding the time setting to decrease the number of seconds to 30 to be in line with what the online guide told me to do. Once you get there, you just need to wait for this orange cricket logo to turn green and it will also make an audible beep when it's ready. So now grab your slippers and preheat the area that you want to transfer the design onto for five seconds. Simply count to five, there's no need to use the timer countdown for this. This will just prep the area so you can easily adhere your vinyl to the area so you can position it nicely before you like fully transfer it. So it just makes it sort of tacky and so you're able just to position and mess around with it a little bit like so. Obviously you try to make it straight and line it up neatly straight away, it will help immensely. So obviously I'm just going to show you both at once because it's the same process on both sides. So grab your easy press, place it down on your project, hit your green button and wait for the countdown. Turn your easy press to the base, obviously because the type of project we can't flip it over to heat from the other side, so we're just going to have to leave it at this point and allow it to cool. Once it's touch cool, you're ready to peel. Carefully peel it back at a 45 degree angle, initially go slowly just to make sure that it has fully transferred onto your project. And if it has, you're good to go, otherwise you might want to just heat for a little bit longer, but I've never had any problems with the easy press and you should be absolutely fine. And there we have it, you finished slippers. So ready to go for your wedding morning. If you've got any questions, please ask in the comments below. Otherwise, please give us a like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time.